Yes, hello everybody. Uh, good to see you. Greetings from um, here from Zoom. I'm very pleased to uh, provide some remarks. I mean, to this uh, high-level segment of the four per thousand uh, forum of partners. Uh, clearly, you know, as came through to the various interventions that we've heard, I mean, more than ever, uh, the world's uh, most vulnerable people are counting on the food system and its stakeholders, of course. I mean, to come up with solutions. I mean, to food to, to feed the world. Uh, without further damaging uh, the planet. Uh, but at the same time, you know, our food systems, I mean, continues to be very much underappreciated, uh, contributing to climate change. And it's responsible actually for, for significantly higher greenhouse gas emissions than previously thought, uh, emitting about 31% of the world's uh, greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, so if the world, I mean, is to meet, I mean, the 1.5 Paris Agreement target, clearly, uh, the food systems and other things in the World Bank which must be front and center in our climate uh, action. I mean, we need to clearly to decarbonize our food system and we need to do so while meeting, I mean, the growing global demands for food and resilience to, uh, to climate change. And part of that, of course, is that then investments in healthy soils are vital, I mean, to meeting this uh, goal. Um, I would like to raise a few points um, why healthy soils, soils are critical. Um, the top meter of soil, I mean, stores carbon at almost three times uh, the carbon found in the atmosphere and 80% of all terrestrial carbon. Uh, so this easily makes soils, I mean, the biggest terrestrial carbon sink. At the same time, unsustainable practices in agriculture have released large amounts of soil carbon into the atmosphere and um, soil organic carbon stocks in agricultural lands are now 20 to 75% lower than they are actually in undisturbed soil ecosystems. 52% um, of the world's agricultural soil are considered to be carbon depleted. And while this is a problem, it also means clearly that there's an opportunity, I mean, to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and uh, restore carbon in soils. Um, um, the estimates are that soil have the potential to sequester up to 5 billion tons of carbon per year. Uh, that's a big number. Uh, also, the IMF actually is saying that the societal price of carbon is $85 per ton. So that's actually a huge value. And uh, 40% of this mitigation potential can be realized by protecting existing stocks of soil or organic car carbon. And 60%, I mean, by restoring or recarbonizing, I mean, depleted soils. Uh, at the same time, to achieve this potential, I mean, business as usual is not an option, and we clearly need to transform our food system uh, so that it becomes a part of the solution. And in that respect, I mean, the declaration that was signed or endorsed uh, at the COP uh, is a very uh, important step in the right direction. Actually, I spoke with the uh, COP presidency two, two days ago, and they actually said that uh, after 134 countries endorsed it on, I think it was on Friday or Saturday, uh, that actually another three countries have now also endorsed it. So now we had 137 countries and counting, moving in the right direction. Uh, the World Bank is very much partnering, I mean, with countries, organizations, and all the stakeholders to transform the food system in such a way. Our, our commitment to climate action, we think is evident in our corporate climate commitments, our investments and global knowledge. I mean, since the Paris Agreement, for instance, the proportion of our finance going towards climate smart, uh, towards climate smart agriculture has actually doubled. Um, also, as an example, our recent partnership, I mean, with the Zambian government through the Zambia Integrated Forest Landscape Project has clearly demonstrated that if we can use carbon finance to incentivize the, re the, re the restoration of forest, improvement of soil health, and a re reduction of emissions with payments to farmers. Um, uh, we think that this, this project is a very good example of how integrated land use planning can really transform degraded soils and lands while adapting to climate change and reducing poverty. Also on the knowledge uh, front, I mean, the bank will be launching a global flagship report titled A Recipe for a Livable Planet. Uh, actually, we will have an event at our bank pavilion at the COP to provide a sneak preview on this on Saturday. So everybody is welcome there. Um, 
And this new report, I mean, details, I mean, some essential technologies to decarbonize food systems and to recarbonize uh, the landscapes. Uh, it also shows, I mean, that healthy soils are among the most cost-effective ways, I mean, to achieve mitigation goals in our food systems. Uh, and the report also shows, I mean, that monitoring, reporting, and verification systems will be critical, I mean, to track impact and drive more money into the pockets of farmers for the ecosystem services that they provide. So in closing, um, I would like to comment, I mean, very much, I mean, the important work, I mean, that the members of this forum are all doing, I mean, to put soil health, I mean, higher on the international agenda. And I would also like to reiterate, I mean, the World Bank's commitment, I mean, to providing the resources and the knowledge that will help governments to act on this agenda and to address this important agenda. Thank you very much. Back to you. Thank you.